Right, so do you recall Suella Braverman, our former Home Secretary and darling of the hard right, swanning off to Rwanda, took us some properties there that the UK were apparently paying for the construction of, showing that we can in fact build houses, just not here in the UK it seems, and gleefully cackling as an infamous photograph of the day appeared to show the site of where refugees deported to Rwanda, should a plane ever actually get off the ground to take any there, will be living. The flats were described as beautiful, certainly a far cry from prison barges, but either they were too beautiful it seems, or our government are completely inept, which will come at no surprise to anyone, but those beautiful flats we apparently paid to build, well Rwanda have just sold them to the locals. Right, so my introduction there, I have to make a small confession, it has not introduced the full truth behind what has happened here to these buildings in Rwanda. There's a bit of a twist to this story I've not mentioned yet, but I'll come on to it. However, the papers getting their knickers in a twist over this today, mainly being the Daily Fail and the Murdoch Times, it would be remiss of me not to tackle the angle they've taken, which are very similar to each other. Might not be much of a surprise, but the one thing neither cover is the actual truth of the story, because these are papers which appeal to the frothing pro-deportation wing of the country. And any red meat they can throw them, well, gets eaten up, doesn't it? The Times has gone with a headline, Rwandan homes earmarked for deported migrants sold to locals. And the fail opted for the much longer, Suella Braverman's Rwandan homes for deported UK migrants are being sold to locals in Kigali as conservative policy continues to flounder. Neither paper are telling the whole story, though the fail headline spelling out that this means trouble for the Tories is certainly the most honest thing about both articles. The fact the Tories are in bother over this because this is the one area of policy that Rishi Sunak, son of migrants himself, has staked what passes for what is left of his reputation on to try and save his measly hide come the general election. The way both these papers have laid the story out though is to say that 70% of the properties that Braverman toured, admired, apparently gushed over the design elements of, have actually been sold to the locals. Affordable housing for local Rwandans. That'll get the gammons frothing, won't it? There are only going to be a few left for deportees, it seems. If any planes ever get off the ground, of course. So it would seem. Here's the thing, though. We were very much given the impression that we were building these houses, weren't they? We were paying for them, were we not? That is certainly how many people have interpreted this story from last year. That we're building these houses. And certainly, I shamelessly alluded to that, perhaps, in my blurb at the start of this video. But all of these houses and flats that Bradman was ooing and ahhing at, we didn't have a penny of involvement in any of them. The entire estate, the Buiza Estate as it is called, is a 257 property housing project of which 163 properties have so far been built, and which allegedly some 70% of which have already been sold for anything between £14,000 and £27,000 in our money. And they've been sold to local people because that is who these properties were always intended for. The entire estate is being constructed in a joint venture between the Rwandan government and the developers, the ADHI corporate group, and collectively they're calling themselves the imaginatively ADHI Rwanda. Now where the fail and Murdoch Times continue to say some of these houses on this, this, this estate will be for refugees, it's not the entire estate as you might have thought and been led to believe. And actually, if we want more reputable source material to go over this story on, sales of these properties were covered by Open Democracy back in January. Open Democracy put an undercover reporter in contact with the developers, ADHI Rwanda, posing as an international investor, and they were told by the sales advisor, and I quote, the houses are for Rwandans, and 50% is already sold. So if you say it's for refugees, I don't think so. The Open Democracy article also reveals some further information regarding their investigation into these homes of who they are actually for. Here's what it says continuing on from that revelation by that ADHI Rwanda sales advisor. Two separate members of staff at Century Real Estate, which is selling properties in the Buiza estate, also told Open Democracy's reporter that the homes were not intended for refugees. They are selling them for people who want to own them. They are not fully furnished, so I don't know how they could be used for asylum seekers, one real estate agent said. The other told Open Democracy that contrary to Braverman's claims, the estate was not on a list of potential properties that could house asylum seekers from the UK. The Rwandan Housing Authority, a government body, says it commissioned ADHI Rwanda to build the Buiza Riverside Estate in November 2020 and that the project was designed primarily with first-time homeowners in mind. 
The UK government agreed its migration and economic development partnership with Rwanda in April 2022. Dun dun dun! Plot twist! So, this housing development that Braverman said was for refugees was actually commissioned two years before any deal over refugees was done with Rwanda. And that if what these estate agents, the sale advisors that Open Democracy spoke to were being honest, and what reason would they have to lie? Braverman must have known these properties were not going to be for refugees, as she had heavily implied. She just went on a tour of a housing estate being built for first-time owners in order to sell a load of guff to us back here via the media, who aided and abetted, clearly. Braverman lied to the public, though. Well, I just can't believe it. Not our leaky Sue. <gasps> Well, let's move on from Buiza. It was, after all, not the only site Braverman visited. There was another that Open Democracy State was fully UK funded. They've said it, so well, this might be a little bit more believable then. Braverman's words once again, a site at a place called Gahanga, just outside of Kigali, a site where Braverman laid the first bricks of a new development, apparently. So surely this is the British built housing then, right? This is the housing for the refugees. That was indeed Braverman's claim, after all. Well, 10 months on, at the time this article came out, unclear if any more bricks have ever been laid there. Although the company in question for building those homes is not named in the article, the British built homes of Gahanga aren't being built because apparently the construction company has run out of cash. Are we not good for it now then? We've given Rwanda some £240 million now. For what? And we haven't even secured accommodation. For these potential deportees yet. It's it a wonder the Rwandan government offered to give us all of our money back, is it? Because it really doesn't look like we've invested in anything at all, despite claims to the contrary. How can we possibly deport people who have nowhere it seems to live once they arrive in Rwanda? Effectively, once put on the plane then, anybody we sent there getting off at the other end could end up literally anywhere and we wouldn't have a clue. Now you can not want these people here all you like but do you really wish such uncertainty on them at that are you that inhumane especially given what they've likely fled from and if you are the sort that says they should stay in the first safe country they come to i'd remind you that a returns policy where we don't have to house every refugee that comes to our shores was part of being part of the eu and we could have negotiated another returns policy by now without having rejoined and this government has instead preferred to fixate on Rwanda instead. Yet they have literally, it seems, done soddle to accommodate that. Save for throw money at Rwanda, an unsafe country at that, despite ridiculous legislation pretending otherwise, and told them, you sort it out. And what would happen to those people once they reached Rwanda? Literally anything could happen to them. I find it insane to think even the matter of providing housing for these people, should they ever be sent, turns out to be another Tory lie. But it's just how far gone and way past their sell-by date the Tory party and every politician currently sitting as a Tory MP is. They deserve nothing less than electoral extinction for considering these human lives to be worth so little. But then perhaps we shouldn't be surprised. Perhaps I allow my sense of empathy to blind me to the fact some people can be so callously cruel and indifferent. Perhaps that is why I won't ever vote Tory, never have and never will but might well go a long way to explaining why they are happy to keep selling arms to Israel as well, whilst sitting on legal advice that has been leaked that tells us Israel are unsurprisingly in breach of international humanitarian law. See this Tory worm squirm over that while still siding with Israel in this video recommendation here. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.